You know how Earth has one moon. Well, sometimes we get a second one. It's temporary, though. We're talking mini moons. They're like uh, cosmic hitchhikers that swing by Earth's orbit for a quick visit. Today, we're doing a deep dive on one in particular, Asteroid 2024 PT5. Big thanks to the Secrets of the Universe YouTube channel for putting this on our radar. This little space rock is, get this, about the size of a small car. Picture like a Mini Cooper just cruising around Earth. It's predicted to show up late September 2024. What's really interesting is 2024 PD5 is only going to be around for about 56 days. These mini moons, they're like temporary neighbors, you know, mm -hmm. and they're short visits. They give us this really cool chance to learn more about, well, everything in the solar system. Like what kind of stuff is zipping around out there? Exactly. And speaking of neighbors, 2024 PT5 was discovered by the Atlas Telescope. That's down in South Africa. Now, this telescope has a knack for spotting cool stuff. It's the same one that found Comet A3 Atlas. Right. Which, by the way, might be visible to the naked eye later this year. Mm -hmm. But we can do a whole other deep dive on that. Definitely. You know, what makes discovering these mini moons so valuable is that they let us study objects that are relatively close to Earth. When we observe them, we can get data about what they're made of, which can give us clues about the early solar system. Oh, wow. And maybe even help us solve some mysteries about how larger moons form. Okay, so we got this mini Cooper-sized asteroid, 2024 PT5. It's about to waltz into Earth's orbit for a bit. But how does an asteroid even become a mini moon? It's like a delicate dance, really. You've got gravity and speed. Imagine Earth's gravity as a whirlpool. And an asteroid like 2024 PT5, if it gets close enough to Earth at just the right speed and angle, it can get caught in the outer part of that whirlpool Whoa. and become temporarily a satellite. Like Earth reels it in for a quick spin and flings it back out. That's a great way to put it. And it turns out 2024 PT5 is likely part of what's called the Arjuna group. These are asteroids that have orbits similar to Earth, so it makes sense they're more likely to get caught in that gravitational dance. Makes sense. Now, the video mentioned 2024 PT5's orbit will be in one is to one mean motion resonance with Earth. What in the world does that mean? So basically, it means that for every one orbit Earth makes around the sun, 2024 PT5 will also complete one orbit even though it's temporarily stuck to Earth. So they're synced up. Exactly. That synchronized movement. It's actually what makes these temporary captures possible. Like a perfectly timed cosmic dance. You got it. Makes you wonder how many other mini moons are out there just waiting for their turn to dance with Earth. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Each new mini moon we find brings us a little closer to understanding how our solar system really works. Yeah. So 2024 PT5 isn't our first mini moon rodeo. You're absolutely right. There are a couple other recent ones, right? Yeah, we've had a few temporary guests in recent years. Um, there was 2006 RH120. It hung out with us for about a year. And then there was 2020 CD3. That one graced us with its presence from 2018 to 2020. So we got these mini moons zipping around. Yeah. Like playing a game of cosmic tag with Earth. It makes you wonder, what would it be like if we could actually see them? Now that. That yeah. would be something else. Imagine just stepping outside. And you look up at the night sky and you see this tiny little point of light moving against the star. And you know it's a mini moon. Exactly. That'd be incredible. Yeah. But even though we can't see them with the naked eye, these mini moon visits are still giving scientists valuable data. Oh, absolutely. Every time one of these little asteroids gets pulled in by Earth's gravity, it's like a little window into how gravity works on a much larger scale. And not just that, by studying what they're made of, and comparing them to other asteroids. It helps us piece together like the history of how our solar system formed. Wow. So this whole mini moon thing is cool, but it makes you think about those permanent captures. Yeah. Like what we see around Mars, which by the way has two moons, right? Phobos and Deimos. That's right. But there's a bit of a mystery surrounding them. Yeah, Phobos and Deimos. They've been puzzling scientists for a long time. They're way smaller than our moon. And they have these weird lumpy shapes. Yeah, they don't look like our moon. Nope, not at all. Plus, their orbits are really close to Mars. And they're super circular, which is pretty unusual for captured objects. Hmm. So how do scientists think they got there? Well, there are two main theories. Capture or a catastrophic collision. Okay, let's start with capture. Okay, so the capture theory. It suggests that they were once just asteroids yeah. roaming around the solar system, you know. And they just happen to get snagged by Mars's gravity. Oh, so kind of like how Earth captures many moons. Exactly. And, you know, their appearance kind of supports that idea. They're pretty beat up. Lots of craters. Just like asteroids that have been drifting through space for billions of years. But you said their orbits are a little too perfect for captured objects, right? 
Exactly. That's the main argument against the capture theory. See, capture objects usually have these long, irregular orbits. But Phobos and Deimos, they're suckling Mars in almost perfect circles and super close to the planet, which leads us to the second theory, a massive impact. So you're saying like billions of years ago, something smashed into Mars. And it was so powerful that it made this giant debris field. And then over time, that debris became Phobos and Deimos. That's the idea. It's like, imagine a cosmic billiards game. You've got this huge yeah. impact, right? Scattering all this material everywhere. And eventually it all clumps together to form the Martian moons. It sounds kind of like how scientists think our own moon formed. It does, doesn't it? But here's the thing, Phobos and Deimos, they're so much smaller than our moon and they're not nearly as spherical. So it's not a perfect match. Right. So where does our little buddy 2024 PT5 fit into all this? How does studying a mini moon around Earth help us understand those moons way out by Mars? It helps us fine tune our models by watching how 2024 PT5 interacts with Earth's gravity, like how fast it's going, what path it takes, how long it sticks around. We can test our simulations and get a better idea of how objects get captured or even formed from these big impacts. So it's like using a small scale model here to learn about something massive that happened millions of miles away. Exactly. Every time we observe a mini moon capture, it's like another piece of the puzzle. It helps us understand this incredible dance of gravity and the forces that shaped everything around us. Okay, last question. And it's a little selfish, but any chance at all of seeing 2024 PT5 with my own eyes? Asking for a friend, of course. <laughs> I wish I had better news. Unfortunately, 2024 PT5 is going to be very faint. Even with a decent telescope, it'll be a challenge. Oh, man. So we got to rely on the pros with their fancy equipment for this one. Pretty much. That's a bummer. But wait, didn't you say that Atlas telescope, the one that found 2024 PT5, it also found a comet? And that comet might actually be visible to the naked eye later this year. Oh, yeah. That's right. Tell me there's good news on that front. There is. There is. Comet C2023A3, also called Tsuchin Shun Atlas, or Comet A3 for short. That one is definitely worth marking your calendar for. It'll be closest to the sun in late September, and then it'll swing by Earth in early October. Okay, and how bright are we talking? Well, it's hard to say for sure, but because of something called forward scattering, there's a chance Comet A3 could be really spectacular. Ah, bright. We might be talking brighter than some of the brightest stars in the sky, at least for a little while. Hold on back up. Forward scattering. Oh, right. You're going to have to explain that one. So imagine sunlight hitting all the tiny dust and ice particles that make up the comet's tail. Forward scattering is when that light gets bounced directly towards us, and that makes the comet look even brighter. So it's like all those little particles are glowing. Exactly. Like a cosmic disco ball. You got it. Count me in. That definitely makes up for missing out on the mini moon. It's going to be quite a show. It really makes you think. Even with all our technology, telescopes, and discoveries, there's still so much wonder up there. There really is. And sometimes the most amazing things are the ones we can see with our own eyes. You say... Well, that just about wraps up our deep dive on Earth's temporary moon 2024 PT5. For more on Comma A3, including when and where to see it, check out the Secrets of the Universe YouTube channel. They have a whole thing about it. And who knows, maybe soon we'll be talking about another one of Earth's cosmic dance partners. Until next time, keep looking up and keep those questions coming.